1980, FIFA was one of the most popular, beloved, and trusted organizations in the world. In 2022, FIFA is one of the most corrupt, criminal, and hated organizations in the world, with dozens of FIFA executives arrested for fraud, racketeering, and money laundering. And now huge protests are erupting over the world in regards to the 2022 World Cup, which raises the question, how did FIFA's reputation fall so dramatically? I mean, FIFA used to be one of the most trustworthy and well-respected names in sports. Their patronage of the World Cup had gained them hundreds of millions of fans. Everyone around the world loved FIFA. Their name was synonymous with the most popular sport game in the world. FIFA was football, but that's the key word, was. And we're gonna outline every single mistake they've made, which has led up to the most controversial World Cup in history. Answering how FIFA transitioned from just a simple football organization to becoming one of the most corrupt political organizations with more power than governments. And so the first part of FIFA's transition was getting involved with some very corrupt regimes. And now this isn't anything new. Authoritarian regimes have always looked to sport to legitimize their rule and prove their superiority. In fact, sports is the perfect tool for propaganda. It promotes and legitimizes the government and generates immense wealth for the country. And the first sign of this with FIFA was in 1978. You see, only two years prior to this World Cup, the democratically elected government of Argentina was overthrown by the military, ushering in the new national reorganization process, or in other words, a fascist dictatorship. And the Argentine dictator Fidelia was keen to use the World Cup to whitewash his crimes against humanity and gain popular support. And so by using the World Cup, this legitimized his government, it brought in millions to his country, and strengthened his regime, and FIFA was seen to be an instrumental piece of his propaganda, with this World Cup becoming the first crack in FIFA's reputation. But to be fair, at the time this wasn't all that bad for FIFA. The outrage and impact of this was fairly minimal, because back then FIFA's reputation was just so strong. People would excuse FIFA, because it was one of the biggest catalysts behind the growth of football. And FIFA wasn't just growing this reputation from the World Cup alone. In fact, the World Cup was only one part of what made FIFA so famous. Starting over 100 years ago, FIFA had slowly spread the good world of football across the globe. And as football got more and more successful, so did FIFA. Over time, their name became synonymous with the sport. Anything and everything to do with football, you could be assured that FIFA had their hand in it. One of the biggest video games in the world was quite simply called FIFA. And so for decades and decades, FIFA had gained the same respect and love that people held for the game itself. By bringing football to the world, FIFA had introduced billions of people to the beautiful game. They were football's champions and they assured that everyone could enjoy it. However, to facilitate their enormous growth, their massive expansion and good reputation, they would need marketers, consultants, ruthless businessmen, men who knew how to make money. And whilst this development would scale FIFA's company to astronomical heights, it would also be the main thing that would destroy the FIFA name forever. And trust me when I say that what ensued in the following years is so shocking that it's hard to believe. And to understand why, I need to introduce you to the man behind this. The man who would transform FIFA into an organization known for money laundering, fraud, and corruption. And at the top of this hierarchy was a man called Sepp Blatter. Blatter seemed like an unstoppable force for nearly all of his career. When he came to power in 1998, FIFA were in their golden age, and for years it seemed like Blatter would continue this trend. But Blatter wasn't alone. He was accompanied by an army of cronies and underlings who all worked with him to further FIFA's interests. But it wasn't just FIFA's interests. Blatter was turning FIFA into his own personal money-making machine. And this caused some whispers of corruption and bribery. But due to his power and FIFA's amazing reputation, these were mostly swept under the rug. But like almost all rumors, there's always a reason for their origin. And this became apparent in 2006, when FIFA's secure hold in their reputation started to slip. You see, investigative journalist Andrew Jennings released his book Foul, The Secret World of FIFA, Bribes, Vote Rigging, and Ticket Scandals. And as you can guess, this went into all sorts of dirty deals and corruption within FIFA's power structure. This was then followed by a special broadcast from the BBC BBC, which covered similar allegations. Among other things, it revealed that Blatter was being investigated for a secret deal to repay more than a million pounds worth of bribes pocketed by other football officials. And as the controversy gained steam, FIFA was suddenly on thin ice. But then something strange happened. What had been a roaring torrent of leaked crimes and allegations suddenly slowed to a trickle. It seemed like all these rumors were just rumors. FIFA wasn't genuinely corrupt. People didn't take these things seriously. The money laundering, the corruption, all of these things didn't matter to the public. And it seemed like Sepp Blatter and his cronies escaped unscathed. FIFA's reputation was still stronger than ever. To the public, it just seemed like a few rotten apples spoiling the bunch. And so FIFA continued as normal. The FIFA game was exploding. The World Cup was more popular than ever. And FIFA was demanding respect from nearly every single world leader. In fact, FIFA had accrued more member nations than the UN by this point, And they alone decided across the world who would host the next World Cup. And as FIFA became more and more powerful, the leaders of FIFA started to realize how much leverage they truly had. These shadowy men, these businessmen, had made FIFA unstoppable. And everything seemed to be going to plan. But these men wanted 
wanted more than just FIFA success, they wanted power for themselves. And now we've already talked about the massive effects the World Cup can have on propaganda and public opinion, but it also served as an incredibly lucrative revenue stream for whoever had it. It really shouldn't be understated the sheer amount of tourism the World Cup generates. I mean, this is why countries bid for the FIFA World Cup, because the amount of tourism alone easily offsets the cost of hosting it. And let's not forget that hosting the World Cup more often than not allows the host country to win, again bolstering up the host country's reputation. So by this point, FIFA undoubtedly held massive amounts of power over countries. And because of their strong reputation they'd built up over 100 years, you would expect that FIFA would use its position of power respectfully and properly. So FIFA held massive amounts of power over the world. The political games from the World Cup were immense, and almost every country were throwing their hats in the ring. The UK, Japan, the USA, South Korea, the list just goes on. All the world leaders would be actively involved in voting for the next host country. And in 2010, FIFA was looking absolutely rock solid. The 2010 World Cup in South Africa had been met with wide acclaim, and FIFA had been making a killing from selling the rights and merchandise. And this tournament only built on the work that FIFA had been doing for years. And with FIFA's scandals drying up, and the public unaware of the real FIFA, it seemed like nothing could go wrong. That was until just a few months after the 2010 World Cup, when FIFA surprised everyone after their decision to give the 2018 World Cup to Russia and the 2022 World Cup to Qatar. Now giving the World Cup to Russia was understandable, but still a little bit controversial. But after all, Russia has had a long history of football and has competed in the World Cup many times before. However, with the allegations made against FIFA in 2006, rumors were swirling about Russian oil and gas money playing a role in this decision. But it was Qatar that caused the real problem for FIFA, because Qatar, a country with no history of football or any relation to the game whatsoever, was chose to host. I mean, FIFA even laid out why Qatar was a bad choice in their own documents for hosting the World Cup. They couldn't find a single strong reason why they should host the cup, but suspiciously FIFA voted in the majority to pick them, despite the massive problems involved, with the most obvious problem being the climate. Qatar as a Middle Eastern country is generally hot and dry, and in the summer, Qatar's temperatures often rise above 75 degrees or 115 Fahrenheit. And considering how physical and demanding football is at the professional level, there was just no way the cup was going to be held in summer, so the choice necessitated a winter tournament. But that had problems as well. Firstly, it pushed out all the other tournaments, both international ones and regional leagues, whilst also breaking the nearly 100 year old tradition being the first World Cup to ever be held in winter. And this is just the first part of why Qatar was such a ridiculous choice. And so everyone was questioning why Qatar got the World Cup, and eventually the truth came out. Corruption. But at the time, no one could really prove anything, so critics were reduced to guesswork. There was all rumours, but no actual hard proof. That was until one year later, when a whistleblower came forward with information that threatened to collapse FIFA's rotten empire. The whistleblower, a member of Qatar's bid team for the World Cup, claimed that two powerful men on the FIFA executive committee had taken bribes totaling $1.5 million from Qatar. The deal had been that for this money, they would vote for Qatar to win the bid. As simple as that. The allegations seemed credible and the public outrage was growing, with renewed cries to reverse the 2022 decision. But surprisingly, just two months later, the whistleblower took back all the claims she had made, completely randomly. And by doing this, the whole controversy muddied the water, and it made it so much harder to tell what was going on. And because of this, it was mostly swept under the rug again. Although three years later, and the same whistleblower revealed that she had been coerced and threatened by Qatar to renounce the allegations. But by then, it was too late, and FIFA got to conceal their shady deals, at least for a time. Although these constant scandals and their reputation were starting to take a toll, as people would begin to wake up to the true hideous nature of the Qatar World Cup. You see, Qatar was also unsuited as a host because they didn't have any suitable stadiums whatsoever. Instead, they had to build them all from scratch, and this was an incredibly costly project. In fact, it's estimated that the 2022 World Cup will cost Qatar over $220 billion, an astronomical figure, especially in contrast with other World Cups. I mean, in 2010, South Africa's World Cup only cost $3.6 billion meaning that Qatar has spent over 60 times what South Africa did. But it wasn't just the stadiums. Qatar isn't even a footballing nation. They've never qualified to the World Cup before. And as you'll find out, Qatar's solution to this problem would eventually be deadly. But at the time, people were still excusing FIFA, as there'd never been a World Cup in the Middle East before. And so maybe it was this notion that swayed FIFA's decision, or maybe it was something else. So far, the corrupt allegations weren't concrete enough to make a full case against FIFA. Lots of it could be argued away or ignored to an extent. That was until 2012, when the veil of FIFA would be pulled back. In 2012, the US attorney Michael Garcia was hired to develop a report on the numerous allegations of bribery and corruption surrounding the Qatar choice. Garcia spent two years hearing allegations and building a case against FIFA, and the contents of his report would have brought FIFA to its knees. 
but instead of FIFA releasing the full report when it was finished in 2014, they instead released a summary. But this summary was in fact far from what the report actually said. Instead of condemning Qatar and Russia, it praised them. Instead, it alleged corruption in the UK on Australia's failed bits. Garcia, on seeing years of his work used against the truth, promptly resigned, and it looked like FIFA were going to evade justice once again. But by now, everyone knew the report had been doctored, and FIFA's reputation had sunk even lower. At this point, everyone knew that FIFA were corrupt. But despite all of the corruption, the 2022 World Cup still went ahead. All that needed to happen was for Qatar to build the stadiums and open their gates to the world. They needed to put their $220 billion to work, and as they had no football infrastructure, it was time to build from scratch. And this would irreversibly damage FIFA's reputation. Because you see, to build these stadiums and to do all these menial tasks, Qatar needed a lot of workers. And to source this, they used immigrants, enticing them with promises of good money and a steady job. Qatar brought millions of people to the country. But when they got to Qatar, their passports were confiscated and they were forced to work in awful conditions for little to no pay. And in total, 6,500 migrant workers have died building Qatar stadiums and infrastructure. All of this happened because of FIFA's corruption. And this would be the catalyst for FIFA's demise. Because by 2015, FIFA's house of cards finally began to fall. But before I continue, I want to shout out today's sponsor, Established Titles. Established Titles is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to lairds, lords, or ladies. What Established Titles does is give you one square foot of land so you can call yourself a lord or a lady and provide you an official certificate with a crest. Once you have your certificate, you will have a unique plot number to see the exact location of your land. By owning this land, Established Titles allows you to change your name to lord or lady on credit cards, plane tickets, even dating profiles, and so much more. And even better is that Established Titles Titles plant a tree with every order and works with global charities One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to support reforestation efforts. And right now, Established Titles told me that the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot, just within a few minutes of walking distance. And so depending on how many of you want to become a lord or a lady, we can build our own little moon kingdom. It makes an amazing last minute gift. And right now they have a massive Black Friday sale. Plus, if you use code BLACKMOON, you'll get an additional 10% off. So go to Established Titles titles.com forward slash black moon. All of this happened because of FIFA's corruption, and this would be the catalyst for FIFA's demise. Because by 2015, FIFA's house of cards finally began to fall. And on May 27th, 2015, it finally happened. The US Department of Justice released a 164 page criminal investigation, which included counts of bribery, fraud, and money laundering. The defendants were seven top FIFA executives and seven other officials. And so FIFA's executives were all promptly arrested at FIFA's headquarters by Swiss police. More indictments and arrests followed, with two former FIFA vice presidents among them. And what the investigation revealed was shocking. It detailed concrete evidence and allegations that the seven executives have been involved in giving and receiving over $150 million of bribes. Over the course of decades, FIFA executives had lined their own pockets. These shadowy businessmen were being exposed, and what followed can only be described as a culling. In total, 11 FIFA officials eventually pleaded guilty, handing back tens of millions in fines. And Sepp Blatter, who had ironically won his re-election as FIFA president just a few days prior, was forced to step down and removed as president. And this had all happened under his watch. He was the one who wanted to expand FIFA to what it is today, and by doing so he had destroyed its reputation. But just like in so many other powerful organizations, his own personal power made him untouched by the charges. The only thing that actually happened to him was that he was forced to resign, and with him went nearly all of FIFA's top management. But no justice was served, because Sepp Blatter had control over countries. He was never going to face actual genuine criminal charges. But it wasn't over yet. Despite all the evidence that came to light in 2015, not much of it actually referred to the Qatar World Cup. We're talking about the most corrupt World Cup in FIFA history. Instead, it was all based around other scandals and bribes. It took until four years until people realized how truly corrupt the Qatar World Cup was. And that was in 2019, when former UEFA president Michael Plantini was arrested by French police after a two-year investigation into bribery in the Qatar World Cup bid. And the corruption went seriously deep, going deep into the French government with the French president being actively involved. With leaks showing that the French government went into negotiations with Qatar officials, who were buying up key French assets like PSG during France's economic downturn, all in exchange for the French government to force FIFA to vote for Qatar. And a year later, in 2020, the public gained a little glimpse into how Qatar had actually played the system. 
Now whilst the truth is still murky, according to leaked documents, the Qatari media company Al Jazeera offered FIFA $400 million for broadcasting rights in the 2022 World Cup, just weeks before the vote. But they also secretly promised an extra $100 million if Qatar won the vote as an extra incentive. Qatar's government added another $480 million to the deal, meaning FIFA stood to gain nearly a billion dollars by voting for Qatar. And when you think this is bad enough, the flow of scandals coming out of FIFA hasn't even stopped. In 2021, Swiss banker Julius Bayer admitted to laundering over $36 million in bribes gained from FIFA and other football officials. And unfortunately, there's no happy ending to this. And because of this, FIFA's reputation is devastated. Although having said this, there is absolutely no justice. FIFA still has a monopoly, and the guilty parties pay back only a portion of their ill-gotten gains. Nearly all of the perpetrators were spared jail time. In fact, the real criminal acts behind FIFA will never truly be known, and Qatar will continue to host the most controversial World Cup of all time. And despite the mountains of evidence pointing to vote fixing and corruption, it will all go ahead as planned, with FIFA once again using the World Cup as the perfect propaganda tool to promote the Qatari regime, with the only real loss in this whole debacle being FIFA's strong reputation. Because by now, almost everyone is aware of how truly corrupt FIFA has become in the last decade. It was the shadowy businessman who poisoned the organization from the inside out, causing FIFA to now just be a shell of what it once was, a corrupt puppet now used by its corrupt puppet masters. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more controversial videos that I can't release to the public, consider joining the channel. For just $5.99 a month, you'll have access to monthly exclusive videos not released to the public, where you can watch our videos on Tekazinski and our Mr. Robot series review, and soon we'll be releasing a video on the man behind Gay Frogs. In addition to the exclusive videos, you'll also have access to my private Discord group. All you have to do is click the join button below or click the link in the description.